Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to looking, be looking at how waves transfer energy. Okay, so giving you a bit of an overview of what we're going to talk about, we're going to go through what are waves and what, what we mean when scientists use that word as opposed to in an everyday kind of sense. Thinking about, all right, why don't waves transfer matter? Why are we thinking about it only in terms of transferring energy? And also looking at the two main types of waves that scientists uh, discuss. Okay, so when we're thinking about what we define as waves. So when we're thinking about waves, we're using it as a, a term or a concept for how um, the, the different ways in which energy can be transferred from point A to point B, from this place to that place. Now that distance might be, you know, at the atomic level, it might be distances across galaxies or everywhere in between. Okay, but so thinking about a couple of examples about where, about how waves are transferring energy. We think about, say, like electromagnetic waves, like um, visible light or infrared radiation or gamma rays, that they uh, transfer by the vibration of what we call electric and magnetic fields. So it's these, these just pure energy that has these two aspects to it. Electric plus magnetic gives us electromagnetic. And that's where the word comes from. We then look at, say, something like sound waves, where we've got the vibration of particles is transferring the energy. And that um, in those particles of what we call the medium or the material through which the sound is traveling, whether it's things like air or water or the, a metal rod or a piece of string, you name it. Okay, but so that this different type of vibration. Well, likewise, then we think about ocean waves. We're talking about the vibration of water particles that bump into one another, transferring energy. But so in each of these kind of situations, that energy is moving from point A to point B, and we say that the mechanism or the how is this concept of a wave. So, um, with when we so it's essentially from a scientific point of view that a wave is a model a way of describing or trying to better understand how energy can move in lots of different situations. So it, it has features of that model that would use us, uh, that, that are useful for us for describing the movement of, or transfer of energy. Okay, and it also helps us to, to understand how waves might look and also how they behave, that is their properties, because the reality is that lots of the waves that we consider are invisible to us. For example, ultraviolet or UV light. We know that it's real, we know that it has a significant effect, you know, it will burn your skin and cause skin cancer, it can be used to kill bacteria, it alters the DNA inside your cells, but we can't see it. And so we need, in order to better understand it, we need to, to develop a way of thinking about it, this, develop this model. And so we're going to, in, in the next kind of couple of videos, we're going to look at that, the wave model or, or the properties of that model to try and, and get a sense of what it allows us to explain and do. Um, especially for these these things that can't be seen. But so we, one of the fundamental ideas about waves is that they only transfer energy. They may involve particles of matter or they may not, um, but that the matter itself, the mass itself is not transferred by a wave, which seems a bit counterintuitive because you go to the beach, you see the ocean waves and you think that there's water coming on the shore. You know, that's, that's travelled from out to sea and that water's made its way all the way up to the beach. But the reality is that each water particle stays pretty much where it is and it just goes up and down. And what, one way that we can kind of see that is that if you say look at like a, a, a buoy in an ocean, or as the Americans would say, a buoy, which I think is a bit strange, but anyway. Um, so a, an ocean buoy is designed to float in a particular place and we see that it will go up and down with the ocean waves that come along, but the buoy itself doesn't move much at all. Um, and so the, the idea is that, so it is, it is moving, um, but it is not actually traveling in towards the beach. That is the particle movement of a wave. So when there's particles involved, that movement is perpendicular to the way the wave is going. So the ocean wave might be traveling left to right, but the buoy is, is only moving up and down, perpendicular at right angles to that wave travel. Um, but then as they, they move, as they, they undergo this process, they bump into one another, they collide with their next door particles, transferring kinetic energy from one particle to the next. And so it starts moving and then it bumps into the next one and it starts moving a bit like dominoes, a line of dominoes, but instead of the dominoes just falling and that's it, that the dominoes actually kind of wobbling backwards and forwards. That's kind of one way to try and understand it. 
Um, but that, that sort of a concept applies in lots of situations. And I mean, one way you can, can visualize it a bit better would be thinking about, say, like a Mexican wave at the football or, at, you know, or a concert or something like that, that in a Mexican wave that people stay in their seat. All they do is they move up and down. But that wave, you can see it traveling across or around the stadium or around the crowd as people um, make that movement. But they themselves are just staying in their seat. They're not physically traveling all the way around the stadium as that wave does. Okay, so, so you try to think about it with that sort of a, a mental picture to, to make some sense of how a wave could transfer energy, how the, the energy could be moving without the particles moving with it. Okay, so for us as scientists that we consider waves in, in two kind of broad categories or broad types, illustrated by this, this image of a, a slinky here. So we've got two different ways that a slinky might be moving. We've got here where the slinky is kind of wobbling from side to side. So it's kind of got this snake-like um, picture. So imagine like we're looking at it from the top down and it's being placed on the table and then it's just sliding from side to side. So the slinky itself, the, the, you know, the, the end bit of the slinky over here is not traveling all the way to the other end here. Um, it's staying more or less in its spot, but the, the, the motion of the particles is side, sideways or perpendicular to the way that it's traveling in this direction. Okay, so it's at right angles in this way. So this type of wave we call a transverse wave, trans being across. Okay, so it's traveling, it, the, the motion is across the direction of the energy transfer. Okay, um, but then we could also, with a slinky, if you kind of bunched it up in your hand and then you just kind of let the coils go every now and again, what you'd see is you get vibration that is um, going backwards and forwards in this direction, horizontally as you would be seeing it now. So some bits compressing together, some bits stretching out or expanding apart from each other. We call this type of wave a longitudinal wave, or uh, sometimes we also call them compression waves. So where we actually, the particles themselves, their movement is in the same line as the actual direction of the transfer. And so they're moving backwards and forwards. The, the, actual, um, the actual section of the slinky isn't traveling from one end to the other, but its movement is slightly different. So we notice a very different effect. Now different, um, Energy in, in different situations, energy will travel as one of these types of waves. Um, and so I've got some examples here for you. So some transverse waves, are, so electromagnetic waves like visible light, UV, infrared, gamma rays and radio, radio waves are all types of transverse waves. They're all actually very closely related as we'll see in a, in a future video, um, that they all are just you know tweaks on the same type of um, pure energy wave. Whereas then we get things like ocean waves, um, that travel in this transverse pattern. That's why we get kind of ripples going up and down. Um, and then also secondary or S seismic waves that occur in an earthquake are transverse waves. They make the surface of the ground or they make the ground move up and down. Whereas then for longitudinal waves, we have sound. So sound waves by, by air particles or the particles of the medium colliding backwards and forwards. Um, we also have um, thermal energy when it's in conduction. So um, we'll talk more about um, the methods of heat transfer in future videos, but this idea of how um, it, this, this type of transfer is because the particles inside the substance, as they're vibrating, they're vibrating backwards and forwards and then colliding with the next one to transfer that vibration. Um, the slinky compressions that you just saw in that example, but also um, in earthquakes, what we call our primary or P waves are longitudinal waves that kind of that travel through the earth and then kind of um, and, and cause the ground to move in a different way. Okay, so we can see um, that we have... Um, so, so that we've, we've talked about what waves are and the fact that they're a scientific model to help us understand how energy can travel. We've looked at the idea that it's only transferring energy and not matter, um, thinking about like our Mexican wave as an example of that, and seeing that scientists talk about two main types of waves, transverse waves and longitudinal or compression waves. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.